welcome to another episode of Stellar Sound Podcast, um, which is a podcast dedicated to astronauts, all the while rocking interdimensional space traveling radars to empower creative musicians everywhere. I am your new host, uh, Lucille, and today I'm joined by Kwon Do. Um, but first, I want to introduce um, and welcome all of our listeners. Um, well, uh, please join our interstellar presence, social media presence. We are on um, Instagram, on Discord, so please check us out. Um, links are in the description. Um, so today I'm not alone. I'm joined with a very special guest that I'm very excited to have as my first um, guest. So uh, he is a Vietnamese hobbyist guitarist and drummer and uh, who describes himself on social media as IT by day, rocker by night. Um, so <laughs> you did your hi. homework, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Hi, and um, how are you today, Kwan? And do you want to introduce yourself a little bit to everyone? Well, thanks for the, the words, uh, Lucille. They were very kind. So, hi, guys. My name is Kwan. I come from Vietnam, specifically Ho Chi Minh City from the south. I was born and raised there 100%. I came to the Netherlands like 10 years ago. So I studied business, graduated in business. I was uh, working in sales for five years and jumped to IT three years ago. Yeah. So now I'm fully in IT. And I think I started my musical journey when I was in seventh grade. I was actually forced by my mom to learn the guitar and I hated it back then. I hated every single minute of the lessons. But uh, a year later, actually I studied it for a month, then I quit. A year later, I just saw a friend of mine busting out a guitar out of nowhere and he was just playing the song, I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. And I was like, oh, well, how did you learn? Like, I, I know that you took piano lessons, but how did you learn the guitar? And he said, well, I just picked it up, learned by myself. So I got jealous, to be honest, and I decided I could do the same thing. So I picked up a guitar and then, yeah, the rest is history. And I've been uh, sticking to it until now. Mm -hmm. And I saw that you also played uh, the drums a few times. Did you oh, yeah. do that along the way? Was it something to add? Uh, the drums have actually been my main instrument for the last four years. So mm -hmm. I kind of put my guitars into the shell behind me that you can see and they have been collecting dust for the last two years a bit ashamed to say that but uh, I've been playing drums way more for mm. the last four years um, first time that I played drums was in high school I was in 11th grade and I uh, came across a rock guitarist in my high school back then it was so cool he played a few songs I wanted to pick up the rock uh, the electric guitar already and then I, I formed a band in a school and then in the band there was a drummer and it was he was like a rare element like there was only one drummer in the whole school so you know it was really cool to see what he could do so I just jumped on the drum set and I was reverse engineering the song Wake Me Up When September Ends by Green Day just by from just from my memory, right? I reverse engineer. Okay, how do we play this beat? What does this thing do? What sound does it make? I was trying to do all that. Then two hours later, I was playing the song myself. It was really cool, but I never got the chance to get back to drumming until four years ago. So mm. I had to kind of leave that hobby hanging for seven years or something like that before I got the chance to pick it up again. Yeah, that's a really long time. So you never actually got uh, drum lessons, am I correct? Um, not entirely true, but for the majority of my journey with drumming up to this day, it's been mostly self-taught. Um, 2019, I came home in Vietnam. Uh, it was the last time that I came home, actually, before COVID. Um, 
I went there and then I asked my mom, "Hey mom, uh, I want to learn some drums. You know, can you pay for the lessons here? Because it would be a, a hassle for me to send money from the Netherlands all the way to Vietnam just for the drum lessons. So I asked my mom, hey, help me out a little bit. Uh, so I took a crash course. It was 20 lessons packed into two weeks. Whoa. So every day I was going to the drum lessons for like two hours mm. at least. Um, yeah, so 20 lessons spread out over two weeks. So five days a week, I was taking the crash course. That's it. That's all I've, uh, I've, I've taken up in terms of lessons. And it probably formed your skills better than being self-taught. Or do you think that um, maybe starting by yourself might be a better option for some people? It really depends on the characteristics. Because for me, I'm a hands-on guy, right? I decided to play drums because I saw it, because I jumped on the drum set, I knew how it felt and I wanted to play it. So that's why I took the lessons later. It was the same thing with my guitar journey. I saw it, I tried it, I want to get better, so I took lessons. Um, so yeah, it depends on who you are and, and what approach you have to learning everything basically. Um, for me, the lessons changed a lot of how I play the drums. At least I got some a more solid foundation. I know how to sit properly. I know how to hold the sticks properly. I know to loosen my wrist, my arm while playing the drums and not just smash everything with the whole elbow. So my mechanics got better as well. So yeah, I would recommend taking the lessons to everybody, but whether you want to do it at the start or after some time, it's totally up to you. Mm, okay. So, um, what was uh, really interesting about you that uh, we noticed in Stellar Sound podcast is that you're really open about the fact that you have a full-time job, a nine-to-five job, yeah. and yet you still want to continue music as a hobby. And if you don't mind me asking, at what point in your life did you feel I just want to keep it as a hobby? Is there any time where you thought about maybe having it as a profession or I actually never thought of going into music as a career but I always I've always wanted to be the best version of myself in that journey I always want to get better because um, my mom is a singer and my dad also played a few instruments so you can say that music it runs in my family and neither of my parents are professional musicians so my mom, you know, she was born during the wartime. Uh, she grew up just standing outside the classrooms and peeking in and seeing other people taking lessons uh, on instruments. She always wanted to do that, but she never got the chance. So when, when she got older, almost until retirement age, she started taking lessons and she started joining like a, a singing choir. It's not a church choir, it's, uh, it's a choir, but you know, it's not religious. Uh, she, she joined a, a choir and then she went on events. So she went on shows and she started making progress or so she even took more lessons. So I, my approach is similar to my mom in this regard. I just did it first and then look for a teacher to get better. And because my mom spent most of her life working a full-time job, maybe two, I'm not entirely sure, I was taught by both my parents not to go into music. Um, yeah, just because of how uh, I was raised, because of my family background, the music was always next to our life, but it's not the goal of our life. But still, I'm very serious about music, and every time I, I jump on the drum set, you know, I spend 100% of my energy. It gives me energy back as well, so it's not like, you know, I'm wasting myself for it but I'm never gonna be a professional musician. However, I do plan to go professional when I retire from my full-time job. And um, as you mentioned, especially with COVID, it was hard to meet up with other people and so on. Did you find maybe a loss of motivation to practice by yourself? And if not, what was, what was the reason that kept you playing? 
Um, actually, COVID gave me more motivations to practice, to play by myself, because it was the only choice I had. For me, giving up music is not an option, right? Uh, not at this stage. I'm not giving it up. But to play with other people during that time was impossible. So all I could do was practicing, uh, make a few recordings of myself, maybe compose, make a new song. Um, so yeah, I kept going. That's just that's just me. I don't give up. But um, the reason why I kind of stopped reaching out for two other musicians and stopped digging further is because of time management. I really have no time left to, you know, go further with this. So even though I'm not dropping music, I'm not making any more progress into this aspect as I was doing back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I've seen on your different social media platforms that you uh, are very open about talking um, that, oh, you don't have the time right now, or um, this is not something I can do right now, like continuing, but you're continuing to practice. And why do you think it's important for you to share that message with other people saying that, you are uh, a real person, you have a life to continue, like, yeah, why is it so important for you? Um, I've learned a lot from music. I've learned a lot about myself through music. And it has helped me with so many aspects of my life. Um, but also thanks to the fact that I'm not doing it as a career. So what I've learned is that you learn to de delay your gratification uh, a lot of the things that we see nowadays are tied to the instant gratification. Like if you take a picture, you post it on social media, you get a hundred likes, you get 200 likes, a thousand likes, and it's the instant gratification that everybody's so used to. Not with music, like you don't practice for a week and then you get a hundred likes like that. It doesn't work that way. You practice for years, even 10 years, before you could go on the show, before you could get, get some, some clapping for yourself, it takes a lot of hard work, dedication, commitment, sacrifices, and practicing yeah, before you see the result back. So I learned to be super resilient from my musical journey. I know that what I'm doing right now might not and will not give me the results that people expect in the next six months, a year or two, but 10 years and look back, I know that I've learned a lot. I know that I have gained a lot of skills. And second thing is um, because I like to challenge myself and I want to do the impossible things, not all, but some. Um, a lot of people that I know around me, they have already given up on music and I want to do what's not possible for them. They keep saying to me, oh, you know, I don't have the time. Uh, I have to take care of this and that. But still, you know, even though I'm not a professional, I still practice half an hour, an hour a day. You can make up all the excuses you want, but I'm still doing it. So I want to be the living proof that music can be a part of your life if you know how to make time for it. Maybe mm -hmm. um, yeah. if you don't mind, can you maybe walk us through a regular week of how you would incorporate music in your daily or weekly life? How would it look like? Yeah, so as you can see in the background, to my left is my guitar shelf. Actually, it's in the corner, but I just dragged it here for you to see. <laughs> to my right is, is the piano, it's an electric piano. Um, I make it easy for me to, to, you know, just grab an instrument and play with it right away. Um, it used to be hard for me to get back into the guitar in the last two years because I have all the guitars in this room which is not my office, which is my girlfriend's office, uh, my wife's office actually. So I have my all my guitars here, but I work next to it, right? So it's, it's not convenient for me to grab a guitar and then just noodle along for five, 10 minutes during a break. Um, so now I hang one of my guitars in my office, right? It's right next to me. So I finish my, my morning meeting, I finish the morning work and then probably just 10 minutes before my lunch break, I would grab a guitar, which is noodle a little bit with it. Or if I have like a 10, 15 minute 
spare time before going into the next meeting and I don't know what I can do because if I, if I want to code, right, I need to focus. I need a longer session. 15 minutes is not going to cut it. So I was just, you know, bust out the guitar, play a few jams. That's how I keep myself connected to music all the time. And then uh, in the same room, I have the drum set. Same story. If I have 15 minutes, 20 minutes where I don't know what to do, instead of watching a YouTube movie, instead of scrolling through social media, I would just uh, jump on a drum set. Mm. And then probably during lunch break or something, I would spend yeah another 10, 15 minutes playing the drums. So I, I try to keep my, my jobs sharp. Um, probably before the end of the day as well, around five o'clock or something, I would also spend another 15 minutes just playing the drums. Mm. Yeah, so that's my regular routine. Uh, usually on the weekends, now that I'm busier than before, but previously I would spend an hour or two on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning just smashing my drums. That's how I would spend my weekend. Now it reduced to 10, 15 minutes again, but still every day with me, there is music. Okay. So what I'm hearing is consistency and keeping everything accessible, keeping it easy to just, even if you have just a few minutes. Yeah. yeah. Another solution from my point of view to the people who are discouraged to continue with music is that uh, when I started learning, uh, just started playing actually, um, the moment that I, I got some more money from my job, cause I just graduated, right? That's, that's when my school duty kind of ended and I had, I started to get some income. I invested in my guitars already. It's mm. the pressure that I make myself feel so that I would not give up on it. And it's not like I would buy like a cheap guitar cause I already had a cheap guitar. I bought a fairly expensive one so that I knew, okay, you know what? I've made an investment now every hour, every day that I don't play it, I'm wasting my investment. Mm. So it's the kind of pressure that forces me, like I have to play it. I've invested in it. There's no giving up now. Mm. Yeah. I completely understand that <laughs> same feeling. Um, but yeah, so uh, you've talked about your daily life, but I also see that you created a lot of um, platforms and a lot of accounts on social media to keep a presence. Did you originally um, start it as maybe a close friends and family thing or why did you even start it in a sense? Um, I think it was during COVID time, uh, it was after the lockdowns. So, you know, I was just stuck at home and I was practicing, but I wanted to have like a goal or a challenge to conquer, to keep myself motivated, to keep myself getting better. So I decided, okay, you know, I'm going to start a channel. And because if you start a channel, you want some results out of it. And the results would be the views, the likes, whatever. And if you want to get those, you need to have content. And if, if I want to have content, I need to practice, I need to record. So that's the psychological effect, a psychological trick I play on myself, um, you know, to keep myself practicing, to keep myself getting better. The, um, I never intended to go pro. I never intended to make any money out of those platforms at all, but that was my trick to myself to keep music at a very high level for me. Yeah, so um, to our listeners, Kwan is on uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and you also have a website uh, <laughs> that I checked out. And I mean, uh, YouTube is a really good way of sharing your practice music and so on. But I mean, a website feels like the next step, it feels more serious. Uh, did you, was that also for motivation reasons? Was it to keep maybe a journal, a diary of everything you've done? Um, it was a combination of IT and music for me, uh, because 
I was also fairly new in my IT journey back then, right? So I wanted to get my hands on experience with uh, with the IT journey. So I just you know built that website. Um, I also had like a there was also a second purpose of maybe I could you know get big with this thing, but I knew because of my characteristic, I knew it was never going to get big. But it was more for my IT practicing than the actual journals. So as you can as you can see from the website, there's not much content there because after I made that, I realized, hey, you know what? It's it's more to practicing. It's more. I also saw. I mean, you mentioned that you wrote music before. You created yeah. music. Uh, what kind of genre do you prefer? Um, I would call myself a guitar-centric guy, uh, kind of guy, because yeah, it's just I. Uh, I actually grew grew up surrounded by Vietnamese revolutionary music, as they would call it. It's not even a genre that. Other people would know about uh, because my mom sang it, you know. So I grew up with that. But then, in my fifth grade, my sister came back to visit home from her studying abroad back then, and she brought Linkin Park back to me. I was exposed to Linkin Park uh, in fifth grade, and it was it was just stuck in my head. So I grew up from then. I grew up with guitar centric music. Like I would listen to bands. Uh, like Green Day, like Simple Plan, you know, all those punk bands back then. The guitar was was like the soul of the whole music, so it stuck to me. So when I grew up even older, um, I I met another guy. He's like a super big metalhead. He knows all the metal bands and he listens to super heavy music. It a part of it got into me. I don't listen to all the bands that he does, but I. Kind of increased the heaviness in my music because of him. At the same time, I also try something softer, like some blues, like BB King, like John Mayer. Uh, some people would say John Mayer is not really blues, but hey, you know he's one of the very few and rare modern musicians who still manages to bring guitar into the modern music. So I like him because of that fact as well, and also because yeah, he freaking rules on the guitar. Is super good on it. Um, so any any music with a band setting, with the guitar in it, pretty much I like. Yeah, and you mentioned um, your childhood, which is also something that you mention on media. You say that a lot of, um, not a lot, but most covers that you do are from songs that impacted you from your childhood and so on. And I mean, is it? You continue listening to it uh, now as uh, as an adult, or is it more um, a nostalgic feeling to recreating those songs now that you can? And what what about continuing this childhood music enthusiasm? Yeah. Do you like? Actually, it's both. It's the it's the both aspects that you mentioned. Uh, now that I am better uh, with my skills than before. I know how to, you know, play those songs. Maybe record. I get a bit better at audio audio engineering. I want to try and recreate those because it's a part of my personality. Whenever I see something, witness something, hear something, I immediately want to reverse engineer it. I want to know how it works, how everything just links together. So now that I know that, I want to try myself to see whether I can reassemble what I heard. All right. So that's. Uh, that's a part of my characteristic. The second part is the nostalgic feeling. Um, yeah, it was something I grew up with. It was something that me and my friends were all banging our heads to. So I wanna, you know, try and make those and see if my friends would bang out to the music that I make, which doesn't happen. I know because they all they all grew, uh, they developed new taste of music. Like, most of my friends, they don't listen to the same stuff that I do. They yeah they listen to the modern stuff they go with the flow for me yeah, it's it's always the guitar music it's always the band that really draws me in and then there's also um, there's also the fact that I still listen to those kinds of music BB King John Mayer uh, Skinner Leonard like you can name all those bands from 
the 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000s. I still listen to them. I listen to their old and new music. It's like when I find that, hey, you know, this band really rules. I keep discovering their stuff and related stuff around them, the same genre. Yeah, it's for me, it's probably a bad thing to say that I don't listen to a lot of different genres. As a musician, you shouldn't do that. You should listen to as many genres as you can. But because I'm a hobbyist, right? I, <laughs> I just listen to that stuff. And yeah. every time I come across a new song, it's like a whole new puzzle for me to solve. Okay, how do they make that sound? How does the guitarist play such a fast and clean solo? How, how does the drummer play the double bass so fast and so clean? Every piece of new music that I listen to is a puzzle for me to solve. And yeah, I just, part of me wants to solve all of those puzzles. That's why I keep practicing on my, on my instruments. That's, that sounds really amazing on your side. That's, um, yeah, I, I'm seeing a lot of, um, people, even, uh, mm. myself, I've often been discouraged from doing something just because you hear something or you see something and you feel like I don't have the skills to recreate that, to recreate what I want to do. And that's often oh, yeah. something that can make you feel discouraged. You don't want to continue. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. Um, so, I mean, have you ever felt that throughout starting music and so I on? mean, who doesn't? Yeah. Who doesn't? If you don't feel that, then you don't care about music at all. Like you feel that way because you care about what you do. Like you want to be good at it. You, you, uh, you're motivated, you're driven to, to make that sound, to play the instrument. But if you don't get that, you feel discouraged. That's just human nature. There's nothing wrong with it. But then understanding that what you hear probably took those people, those musicians, tens of years to create. The fact that you don't create it within two weeks or two months or two years, that's just human nature. It's normal. There's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You can be discouraged. You can't help it. I understand. But just know that, hey, they spend tens of years to make that sound. If you don't make it in two weeks, that's normal. It's intended to be that way. That's how you get blown away by the music. And that's also the kind of music that I will listen to. I, it should be hard and for me not to completely diagnose it in like one, two, three listens. It should be hard for me to, it should be hard enough for me to keep discovering new hidden gems inside a song every time I listen to it. Um, yeah, I mean, take a, take for example, Avenger and Fall. That's probably my favorite band. They have those videos on YouTube where they would break down the song. They would analyze what's going on behind, how many layers of music they have in there, the layers of instrument, the composition, what was going through their mind when they were making the song. I watch all of those. And from my analysis, when I was practicing the songs, and then I compare my analysis to their breakdowns, it's a whole world of difference. And that's why I keep having the renewed interest in, in this kind of music, because it's just so complex. It really is complex because now that I've done music production, I just appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that our new generation and moving on forward is quite lucky in the terms that now because of um, YouTube and the internet, uh, it's so much more easier to be self-taught to look at tutorials and so on. But um, what is there any message that you'd like to give out to students, those who think that they want to start learning? Is there any advice you'd like to give them? Yeah, for me, um, I was also struggling when I came here the first year because I left all my gear in Vietnam, right? So I just came here empty handed. But um, music already had become a big part of my life that I was not willing to give up. So I just found a way and you know? I just got in touch with people. And whenever I came across somebody with music interest or with the gear, I would ask, Hey, you know, can I just borrow your guitar for a few weeks, a few months? And then eventually 
Luckily, I met a friend who had a spare guitar, and they would lend me that guitar for a year so that I would not lose my calluses. So it's it's really about a drive. Um, if you think music is important for you, you will find a way. Um, just like I'm not a professional, but I own a lot of expensive equipment. Yeah, do I regret it? No, not at all. I could have spent my money on something. Yeah, probably way more valuable in terms of the return on investment. Um, but I don't regret any of it because it has taught me a lot. It has helped me stay balanced during difficult times in my life. This is, for example, if uh, as a student, right, you would be assigned into a group project, right, and more often than not, your groups would let you down, not once, not twice, but continuously, right. When you have those frustrations, you have nobody to talk to, very likely. Or if they listen to you and then they still can't solve it, you have to solve it yourself anyway. This music is my getaway. I would just pick up the guitar. I would get mad at myself for not being good at guitar. I would forget about the problem at school. That was my getaway. Um, but then, a few weeks later, a few months later, I keep practicing the same stuff. And I notice, hey, you know, I'm getting better at this, right? So maybe if I just keep going further, I'm gonna get even better. And that mindset helped me with everything else I do in life. Just stay at it. Um, find the people who can help you out, who are like-minded. Even if you don't have all the gear, even if you don't have the money, if you have the drive, you will find a way, and people will help you out. But if you don't even if you don't even have that drive inside you, there's yeah, there's not much that we can do. Where well, right there is a will, there is a way. As exactly. The famous saying goes. Um, so it is soon our interview is soon coming to an end. But uh, before that, is there any possible appearances? Any anything that you like to share with us? Um, yeah. I have three items I want to share with you. One is my drum set, which is in a different room, so I'm going to send you a picture later. And two other items are two guitars that I'm really proud of. Uh, so Ooh. this is the first one. Whoa. This is a uh, a Schecter, um, a, Schex a Schecter Sinister Custom S. The S stands for Sustainiacs. So this one here is uh, a Duncan, yes, yeah, a uh, Seymour Duncan Invader bridge in the bridge. This one here is the Sustainiac pickup. What it does is, um, yeah, it can ring forever. You, you just press a note, you activate the Sustainiac via these toggles. It will, the note will ring forever. It can ring on the, on the natural uh, note. It can also ring in the harmonic sound and it can bring in two different harmonic sounds. It can blend between harmonic and, and natural as well. So super cool because this guitar is the model used by Sinister Gates from the band Event Sevenfold. He's my idol. He's why I keep practicing the guitar. So I think I bought, I bought this one somewhere 2018, 2017, probably 17, probably 17. Bought it all the way from the US. It had a few defects, a few cosmetic defects, but you can't see it from here, I'm pretty sure. So I, I bought it for a cheaper price, and uh, here's also a defect. It should be completely gold. Mm. It's a bit red because the guitar tech that I sent the guitar to, he messed up um, <laughs> the repair job. So mm. he fixed it for me that way. So what kind of um, songs or genres would you use this for? Uh, this one, it can do everything, but it's more optimized for, uh, metal. It's more optimized for okay. metal music. Events 24 is a heavy metal band. And, uh, yeah, this one is often optimized for metal, but I played all kinds of music with it. I, I played the blues with it. I played pops with it. I played, yeah, metal naturally with it. It can do everything. Um. I'm very proud of this one. I haven't touched it. This is the first time I've touched it in, I don't know, nine months, even a year or something. But it's sitting in a hard case. I've bought a hard mm. case dedicated yeah. to it. 
So uh, yeah, this this is a part of my life. It's a story. It's a history for me. So another one. This one is a uh, an LTD. Uh, I forgot the series name, but it's quite a cheap guitar. But why is it so important? I want to show you. So you can see these two pickups are similar to the previous one, but these are copycats. Uh, they are called Dragon guitar pickups or something, but they model the Seymour Duncan Invaders. So they sound similar, not exactly the same, but similar. But this one I traded for with my Ibanez. It was mm. Ibanez RGD three twenty. Also a cheap guitar, but I traded that one for this one. It was a bit of a loss because the Ibanez was more expensive than this one. But I just wanted to change it. I've I've had the the sector with the Floyd Rose already, and the other Ibanez also had a Floyd Rose. I don't need more Floyd Roses in my life, so I <laughs> gave it away. Yeah. So got this one with a hot bridge, hardtail bridge. Um, all the hardware you see on the guitar has been replaced. So these. These mm -hmm. are not the stock pickups. I replaced those. I re I bought them for the US. Um, I brought it to my guitar tech so he would install this for me. Also replaced the hardtail bridge. It used to be chrome, silver chrome, and now it's gold. These two also replaced. They used to be chrome. Now they're they're gold. Yeah, this one. This is probably the only original thing on this guitar. Um, also the plate replaced. The tuners. They're all replaced. Uh, these are now Sparzo. That I bought them from the US as well. And the Guitar Tech helped install them for me. The nut has also been replaced. So this is my project guitar. I saw it online and I thought, okay, you know, I just want to, uh, I want to try out a seven string guitar. I've tried it out before, but I don't have one. I decided to have one and I kind of designed this whole thing I came up with the color scheme of how I wanted to look. And yeah, I was looking around, was researching a lot into the hardware. So it sounds like a beast. Uh, it probably doesn't feel very nice because it's a cheap guitar. So, you know, all the construction in the fretboard and everything, but it sounds good. And uh, it's a fully customized gu guitar for my taste. Mm. So that's why. It's, it's a memory for me as well. So do you use this one more regularly then? Or? Um, probably 30%. I would mm. say lately, as of late, as in the, as in the last four years, I used another guitar in there, which is um, an LTD. I've used that one more because it's, yeah, it's more optimized for the songs I wanted to record. Because I don't have such a, a high range of vocal, right? So if I wanted to record myself, I would have to lower the, the tones of the song. And that one has been detuned quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. It has super thick uh, string gauge for lower tuning. So it's more optimized for my vocal, my vocal range. I use that one more, but with practice, I would practice on a Schecter. And this one is just to record and to help with the, the lower tuning. So that one has been 40% of my time, maybe 50. And then the Schecter would be you know, 25%. And then this one's probably 20%. Okay. Just for, just for recording. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you for showing us the guitars. I can tell you have a lot of love and memories with them yeah, by the do. way you talk about them and so uh now let's move to our last segment which is called behold the meteor shower so in this segment um i'll be asking a set of rapid fire questions and you will have to answer as quick as possible, the first answer that comes to mind. Um, are you ready? Okay, let, let me just have a sip of uh, coffee, get mm -hmm. my brain activated again. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so if you could be an instrument, what would you be? Oh, uh, drum set. Drum set. Mm. 
I think I answered the exact same thing when I first answered that question. <laughs> okay. Um, what is your favorite month or season of the year? Season would be winter. Weird, right? I know. <laughs> no, it's I. Winter is pretty nice. Yeah, a lot of good magical moments with winter. And to you, which movie has the best soundtrack? Oh, this one is super tough. Um, School of Rock. Oh, good with <laughs> Jack Black. Yeah. Um, now, which Harry Potter house are you in? Not sure. Probably Gryffindor. Okay. Probably. Gryffindor. <laughs> probably. What is your go-to feel-good movie? Probably School of Rock as well. Ah. Uh, <laughs> like it, it feels like living a dream for me with that movie. Yeah, it's it was a big part of my childhood, so I completely understand. Um, what is the best musical advice that was given to you? Don't go pro. <laughs> <laughs> that was my mm. mom. <laughs> yeah, by your mom. <laughs> And who was the last song or artist that you listened to? Avenged Sevenfold. Okay, yeah. Is that uh, what kind of music is that? I don't Heavy know. Heavy metal, it, unfortunately. Heavy, Heavy metal. metal. Yeah. Okay. And any song genres or instruments you might want to learn or pick up in the near future? Piano. Piano. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I have it here, but I've never really got lessons or anything. Just play by ears, and it sucks. <laughs> so maybe practice more piano, I assume, in the future. Yeah. And last thought, uh, last question is: What is the best song ever? Ooh, "Afterlife" by Avenged Sevenfold for me. Okay, <laughs> so I can see a pattern here. <laughs> Okay, so thanks. That was um, to let the listeners, to let us know a bit more about you, what you like, and so on. Um, so, is there any last words that you would like to share with everyone? Um, well, first, I would say uh, apologies to the professional musicians for you know how I feel about the career, but. If it works out for you, I'm happy for you. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit jealous. If it works out for you, because I really, really want to live that dream. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just not courageous enough to take the risk. And second thing for all the people like me, all the people who are not pros, music, it's more important to you than you realize. It teaches you a lot of lessons in life, not just in music, in life about yourself it helps you connect to yourself so don't give up on it please one way or another even if it's 15 minutes a day it's one song per day stay at it you will learn more from it than you ever realize but it takes time to learn it takes time for you to realize the lessons that you learn from it so stay at it one day you will have another story to tell to the people who have given up mm -hmm. it feels cool though right yeah well um i think at uh stellar sound podcast we want to thank you for being here um what you said was really inspirational and i think a lot of people can relate to that story and not maybe not even just a musician it can be for anything any hobby any work anything that you um want to continue but you have a hard time so i think it's really important for um people like you for people in general to speak out speak out about you know what are the possible um scenarios that it's not it's not going to happen for everyone but that doesn't mean that you have to lose passion for it so um Kwan, I I want to thank you again uh, for joining the podcast and um, well <laughs> yeah um, thank you very much. Right. The pleasure is all mine. 
I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be invited today and to share my story. I hope it helps uh, people who are going through the struggles that I mentioned. Just, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So thanks for having me. It's been, uh, it's been a very good time here. Well, thank you. And thank you to the listeners of Stellar Sound Podcast as well. Uh, you were listening to Lucille and with our very special guest, Kwan Do, or QD as well, <laughs> I've heard. And, um, well, we hope that you will join us for our next episode as well. Bye-bye. Bye.